We are going to transition now. We're going to switch to our second Lunch and Learn for today, and that is going to be presented by Dustin Kidd. Dustin is a gold looper, and he is with Bourbon City Yacht Tenders, which is a Highfield dealer, and Highfield is also, Bourbon City is an AGLCA sponsor, and Highfield is as well, so um, Mike Carroll is here with us with Highfield, but we're going to turn it over to Dustin, and Dustin, if you want to go ahead and enable your screen share and take sure. it away when you're ready. Can you hear me? All righty. Kim, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you oh, and good, I good. see your screen. Oh, good. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, like Kim said, my name is Dustin Kidd. I'm the owner of Bourbon City Yacht Tenders. We are the Highfield dealer in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, that's the only thing we pretty much uh, specialize in is uh, Highfields. Um, Kim also mentioned that I am a gold looper. Um, so we are uh, joined by Michael Carroll of Highfield. Uh, he's the uh, marketing director uh, with Highfield. And I think uh, Tom Watson might be on the phone with him. He's the G GM of Highfield. So yes. hopefully today, uh, I'd like to talk to you guys about the importance of selecting the right tender uh, before you set out. Um, different things that Highfield or different models Highfield offers for you guys, and then uh, answer any questions you may have about tenders. So a little background on myself, um, Gold Looper, class of 18. Um, that's kind of why I have the passion for this. Uh, kind of stumbled into it. Uh, I was in sales for 14 years, walked away, did the loop. Um, I'm probably like you where most of uh, your loop boats came with the tender on the back and I knew nothing about it and it did the job. Um, it wasn't until I got back and realized uh, the importance of having a good tender and I just happened to mention to a friend that I was in the market of upgrading. Um, as you can see from this picture, that's uh, my dog Steel and that's uh, my, my Chris Craft Constellation. And then the tender we had was a just a fiberglass, basic model and it did the job um, it was a tiller mount uh, drive and so when I got back when you use that boat in and out for our loop took 333 days and we used it a lot you kind of tend to kind of figure out what uh, what's important to you and what you want and I just so happened to kind of mention to a friend of mine uh, that I was in the market for a new tender kind of wanted some features that I mentioned and fate uh, had it where he was up at the Chicago boat show, saw a picture of a high field, took a picture of it and sent it to me. And he's like, I think I found your next boat. And uh, I saw it, bought it sight on scene, drove up that next uh, weekend. I think we we're in January and brought it home. And it was perfect. It was everything I, I had been looking for and things that I didn't even really know I had or I was wanting. Uh, when the season hit here in Louisville, Kentucky, people were going crazy over it. I mean, obviously I love the boat, but then people were just going crazy over uh, what kind of boat is that? Who makes it? I mean, it, it was just amazing. So uh, it was actually a classic 380 uh, from Highfield. Um, now that I kind of walked away from my job, I was looking to parlay that into something I'm more passionate about, didn't know what that looked like and got a wild hair to call Tom and asked him what it takes to be a dealership. And looks like he was in the market for putting a dealership in the Midwest. And I kind of explained my background, my passion for growing up on boats, what I've done with the Great Loop. And uh, we were granted the dealership and it's been a great partnership ever since. And I'm very thankful to have that because um, obviously, I'm not retired now. I, I want to do the loop again when I retire, but this gives me a kind of a way to keep in touch with loopers. Uh, I love to hear their stories. Um, I have loopers call me all the time and I get to help them guide them on, you know, maybe I, the best tender for them. And I get to hear their stories. So for me, that's kind of my fill of getting into keeping up with the, the loopers until I get to do it again. So Even, you know, like I said, fate kind of intervened and, you know, it just so happened to be a high field that I fell in love with, but more that I did the research, I kind of see why that the are the world's uh, number one uh, rib tender uh, out there right now. Um, in their short beginnings, they've actually 
made huge progress. And for me, it was the quality. Uh, if you guys get a chance, uh, highfieldboats.com actually has a, an amazing uh, video on the factory tour. And just everything about how they're made um, is top notch in quality, everything down to the material they use and their processes and everything. And so it's been a great for us because I feel like I'm getting to do what I love and I'm selling a quality product. The nice thing about it is they really offer for, especially for loopers, kind of everything for everybody. Um, everything, you know, from the budget minded to kind of what we say, like the sexy, good looking boat that, you know, is really fun to drive and everything in between. So based on your budget, your restraints of your boat, your davits, things like that. And I'll go a little farther into that. Kind of overview of their models and their lineup. Um, and I'll dive into a little further each one of these. Um, from the bottom right, we have the roll up. Going into the ultralight, classic, and then the sports and patrols. But I'll focus really on the, uh, the classics because I, for us in loopers, I feel like that's our sweet spot. And that's kind of really where I try to guide people. But everybody's loop is going to look different. So it doesn't, you know, so everybody has their own idea of what that's supposed to look like and what their budget is. But starting at the bottom, uh, the roll ups, just like it sounds, I call it the boat in a bag. Um, we see a lot of sailboaters have this um, people with limited space, somebody that's not really going to use their tinder much, or, uh, and it just, it's a good quality boat for just a little time, you know, very cost effective and takes up very little space. They come in two models, um, particularly the aluminum floor and the air floor. Uh, both of them take about 15 minutes to uh, inflate and get ready. Um, there's a nice video that Highfield Act actually has out there describing this. It's a, it's a good little watch, um, but it's also a great boat. Stepping up from there, you have the ultralight. With the ultralight, you still get the solid hull rather than the, the roll up. Yeah, it's a nice part about a high field. They are a aluminum substructure. That's what I really liked in it, is you get the strength, but also the lightweight and durability with that aluminum. And what we say is we kind of outperform other fiberglass boats out there. We're doing less, doing more with less. Um, especially when it comes to a tender, you have uh, the big thing on it is weight. And when you utilize the lightweight and durability of aluminum, you're able to get away with a smaller motor. You're not having to overpower it just to do the same performance. Um, but the ultralight series is a great boat. Um, they make different uh, models in the ultralight, everything from a 710 uh, foot to all the way up to 11.1. And uh, as you can see from this, it's a single floor. Um, and then it's got a kind of basic uh, uh, platform to it. Um, great for like a tiller mounted motor, somebody that wants a uh, something very simple, very lightweight. Uh, we see a lot of these on davits that are put into the horizontal uh, position or lifted up and where you take the motor off. These are great boats for that or somebody that may be for the sailboaters out there or somebody that has a, a limitation on their davit size or their weight, um, great to put on top of the boat. But you still get that solid structure you do with the, the, the uh, aluminum flooring. Next from, from that is the classic series. And like I said, this is what really made me fall in love with Highfield. Um, going back to my story of me looking for a new boat, um, the boat that came with my loop boat was just a fiberglass deep V uh, single hull uh, boat. And this is really where I kind of like to guide and use my experience for loopers and guide them on something that's going to be, I say, more practical and more user friendly. Because uh, the boat that I had was very, I looked at it as more of a tool, uh, especially looking back, it, it did its purpose, but could I have done more? with a better boat and wow, I wish I would have had my high field on my loop because I would have explored more. Um, I tell a few stories of how the 
boat that I had, it, the dead rise on it was very small. So it was always taking over water. Um, we were in Key West, I think, and it was, we were on the Key West mooring field. And even with the smallest way or wind out of the north on a beautiful day, where the water was just capsizing our boat, it was miserable. So we went through a lot of phones. Uh, we got used to zipping up our shoes and Ziploc bags and <laughs> going to dinner. So that was one of the things that I really wanted to have on a uh, on a boat was uh, when you're looking at it, is your dead rise or what Highfield calls the dry ride. And that has to do with the degree of what that boat boat's nose is off the water. And one thing that I like about Highfield is the rub rail is a solid piece rub rail that is actually cupped to actually help deflect that water. So you actually get a boat that is really dry ride. And with the classics, you get that double hull uh, flooring. So when water does come in, the water simply drained to the hull. You're, you know, you're not stepping in that water. The bilge will take it out and your feet stay dry. That was huge. And for me, having steel, our dog on board, uh, that flooring was very, it's very nice now where he has a solid floor to step on. And not only for him, you know, for me to have a solid flooring where I can easily keep my balance rather than that deep V where it was very awkward for him to stand and uh, just made it very difficult. They have a variety of sizes. Um, we think the classic 310 is a sweet spot. Um, and going into that is anything above a 310, you can actually put the FCT console. And that's what really another thing that made me fall in love with the, uh, the high fields and the classics is that console. My idea with the console was you had to have this big honking fiberglass console that weighed the boat down, took up a lot of real estate. But this kind of European style console gives you an opportunity to have the best of both worlds. Um, and when you pair that with a 310, you're going to get uh, the comfort of a seat with a steering wheel. Uh, we like to pair that 310, uh, which is 10 foot two inches with a, uh, say like a 20, 20 Tahatsu motor. And that's gonna give you an amazing ride. It's gonna give you the, the comfortability that is gonna give you to be able to explore. And Cause for me, and like I said, everybody's different. I would want, when I did the loop, I wanted to explore as much as possible and not having a reliable, comfortable tender kept me from doing that. I'm sure we did it, but looking back and knowing what I know now, if I would have had, say, the FCT console in a 310 or a 360, I would have gone from beginning day in to day out, and I would have been on that tender exploring different restaurants and nooks and crannies, especially up into uh, Canada, things like that. So it's a nice addition to a 310. And then, of course, uh, Stepping up that, you have the sport models. The sport models, uh, like I said, are more of the sexier, um, kind of higher end. Um, these are great boats. They come everything in from a 300, which you can see here. Um, they're a little bit more, you have the bigger console. Uh, you have a little bit more luxury. And when it comes into the seating, there you can get a little bit higher horsepower. And you can get this in a you know, variety of sizes, everything from the 300 all the way up to an 800. But uh, once you go past that, you're getting out of the tender size. So, but the uh, sweet spot for that one, you know, is the 300 to 360. And if your boat makes it 390, they do weigh a little bit more um, for Dabit systems. Um, that's why we really like the classics, give you an ultra lightweight to be able to kind of manipulate most Dabits. Uh, for instance, the Hurley 3.0, um, holds up to 400 pounds. The classic with the FCT console and a motor is right at 400, and that's a good pairing. And most of your davits are rated around 400. So um, there are less and there are some more, but based on your budget and your needs, that's where you kind of kind of decide. So from there, just that's kind of overview for Highfield, kind of why I'm passionate about it. Um, you know, I was able to start this dealership and Last year, it's been fun. It's been a great opportunity to keep in touch with everybody. Let me see if I can get back to uh, in my share screen here. And do we have any questions come in? We do not have any just yet. Okay. We've got a hand raised, so let's go ahead to that. Let me just uh, get to that spot here. Um, Robert McGee has his hand raised. So Robert, you should be able to unmute and go ahead and ask your question. 
I have a high field 310 and I love it. It's paired with the Mercury 15. Awesome. Question, what product can I use to clean it? And how, what do you recommend for applying state registration to cows? <laughs> that's, the, that's the big one. Have you had any luck with the uh, registration yet? Well, it's registered, but I haven't tried to. Well, I mean, have you had any luck with like anything that's worked so far? Have you put letters on it and come off? We just acquired it last fall. So now. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, there's a different solutions out there uh, as far as lettering, you know, the vinyl lettering. Um, right. I, I would say they, they're good. They stick, but they don't really last long term. So you may something you have to do every season. Um, there are different companies that make plates uh, that you can hear kind of zip tie to uh, the handles. Uh, I know Hurley makes one. Um, I know a lot of people make their own kind of uh, uh, kind of take a template of a piece of plastic and cut it and put some holes in it and zip tie it too. Uh, uh, unless uh, Mike has any kind of solutions or uh, uh, Tom has any solutions. I've used the plate before with success on a dinghy. Yeah, that's kind of what we we guide people to. Um, we we do have a vinyl cutter. We can cut it out. They'll stick, but I don't think they, it's a long-term solution. I tell people you'll probably have to replace it every season. Um, and then you, of course you can actually have it painted on if you wanted to, um, stenciled. What about a product just to clean? So cleaning, we always recommend soap and water. Um, Highfield's got a good uh, resource on their website. Um, it's under, um, about, I think, on their website, and it's got some good solutions. Are you PVC or Hypalon? Or do you know? Yeah, we're Hypalon. Okay. Um, I always say soap water is a great uh, clean. Um, as far as the sea deck in there, the thing that I found that works the best is uh, just a, it does get a little grimy, if, especially if you had that lighter color. The, just a Water and pressure washer, like an electric pressure washer, works great. Um, and then, if you do have some black marks and smudges that are, you know, tend to happen, um, a little bit of, um, oh, what am I thinking of, Michael? Um, uh, uh, not the. Um, you're muted, Mike. If you're, if you're. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a, there's also a product from a company called. Blue Marine, and we do have some of the that on our website. Uh, if you go to our website, there's information on it. Um, well, good. It's actually from the company Orca that makes the fabric. Oh, okay. Good. It's the Hypalon fabric. But yeah, a lot of times just soap and water or even some bathroom cleaner, just a, a, but nothing harsh. Yeah, no harsh chemicals. Don't use harsh chemicals, especially on the PVC. Is there any problem? Are you heavy? Robert, have you had any issues with anything not coming off or anything? Or is this just more of a general general question for you? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I muted him again. <laughs> I just oh, realized okay. that. Uh, sorry, I can get him back. Give me one second. In the meantime, um, somebody did suggest um, a um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Yes, actually, I've used that too. That's actually really nice. And I've got Robert back. Sorry about that, Robert. Okay, I've just used uh, ordinary boat wash and uh, yeah, there's a little dinge to it, but I'll scrub harder with the brush maybe. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Okay, thanks. And we do have another hand raise. So let's go to Joe Gursky. Joe's got a question. All righty, Joe. Am I on? You You're on. Uh, I have a high field on order right now, a 310. And I'm in Florida. I had contacted you guys a while ago, but I just uh, first of all, do you guys have any motors? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't uh, actually. No. <laughs> yeah. We don't carry. Um, we're not directly tied to uh, any one motor manufacturer. We don't stock and sell motors. The motors would be ordered by the dealer. Yeah. Uh, so no motor availability this year has been uh, a, a real problem, um, especially in certain popular models of motors. Um, so it's, it's really up to the dealer to just, if they have it on order for, or sometimes you might have to buy the motor from someone else that you buy the boat from, you know, because you just need to get the motor. Yep. Or, or what the dealer ordered. They and did recommend they, like, look around on my own. But, yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, it, it's everybody's in the same spot. I mean, we're, we're struggling to, um, due to COVID and back orders and shipping, it's, uh, it's a slow go, um, 
we've got a few that we're, you know, selling with our boats, but as far as extras, I'm sorry, I don't have any. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I don't have any solution for you on that one. Yeah. But on the high field I'm getting, I'm going to have the console on it because that, that I, will really turn me on to them. I would highly recommend it. It's a great, uh, great boat. And that's a console makes a, your life totally different when you're out there. But what I want to know is, you know, I, I don't need uh, such a big motor. And I was thinking of going with a 15 instead of a 20. Is that going to be some? So let me, I'll give you, here's how I steal my, steer my customers. We rigged the 310 with a, a 20. Here's why. The 15 and 20 are on the same. Well, we're a Tahatsu dealer, first of all. So the, the Tahatsu 15 and the Tahatsu 20 are on the same block. So they're the same size, same weight. Okay. So if you're going to, without any more weight, I would just go ahead and put a 20 on there. And that's what we put our recommend our customers using is the extra horsepower. And that goes for the same for if you're going to like a classic 360 or 380, they can take up to a 30 instead of going with a, you know, so some we either do a 20 or a 30. So the 30, 25 and 30 are on the same block. So we say, instead of doing the 25, do the 30 because it's the same weight you're just gonna get that extra horsepower and it's only a couple hundred dollars more so that's how we kind of steer our customers towards that makes sense and uh, how do you feel about uh the yamahas is that that's what i'm going back and forth with either yamaha or i've had tohatsus before and i really like them you know, we're, I mean, we really like the Tahatsu. Um, they, I, cause we get a lot of questions from about Tahatsu cause they're like, I've never heard of them or whatever. I'm like, well, have you heard of a Mercury? Yeah. Have you heard of a Honda? Yeah. Have you heard of a Nissan? Yeah. Well, they're all made by Tahatsu pretty much. So, um, you know, different makes and different models, but most, most of them. So I always say that they're the ones that put, uh, they put their money into uh, R and D rather than marketing, so that's why you haven't heard of them. But like you said, and other other people, once you have a Tahatsu, you love it. Um, the Yamaha, we've rigged a couple because um, we have some people that just really want that brand name and they want that uh, the just they they've had good experience with the Yamaha. So I don't have any yay or nay on that one. So we've had success with it, um, but you know, like everything else different people have different views on it so but you know it sounds like right now if you can get a yamaha or if you can get any motor i would put it on i'm sorry go ahead, oh, i was just going to chime in there about it's it's you, exactly to what dustin was saying is it's you have to look at the block and the, the trick is if you go on the manufacturer of the engine's website and you just check the weights that tells you which block is which so again yeah a 15 and a 20 tatsu is the same block so you'd always go with the 20 and with a Yamaha, the 20 and the 25 are the same. So like if you're, you'd probably go for the 25, the 25 Yamaha is a lightweight 25. I think it's 142 pounds. And then when you go up to a, a 30, it, the 30 and the 40 Yamaha are the same and same with Tahatsu. So you, you know, if you're 25 and 30 Tahatsu are the same weight, you'd go with the 30. So it, and, and then of course, right back to, it depends on what you can get right now. <laughs> That's uh, so. Okay, thanks. We've got several other questions that came in that I'm hoping we can make the time to get to. So um, if we can jump into them. Um, can you give a price range for the high fields? So that's a good question. Uh, feel free to call me. Um, I'll provide my uh, contact information uh, or look, contact your local dealer. Different boats have different um, price ranges. I will say like, you know, you're you know, it just all depends on what your, your budget is and what motor you want, what's set up. I mean, you know, we say the sky's the limit. So people are rigging these. You now we're doing navigation now, transducers, stereos, everything. So just kind of, I would reach out to your local dealer um, and kind of see what they have uh, available and what they're offering. Okay. Um, can you go over the main differences between PVC and Hypalon? Um, and sure. You choose one over the other. Yeah. And this is and this is what I tell our customers because we are in the Midwest. We are surrounded mostly by fresh water. And we, I'd say we sell probably 60% PVC versus somewhere down in Florida, they probably sell 80% Hypalon. And it's just what I, what I guide my customers on is what are your, you know, where are you going to be? Uh, and what are you, because Hypalon does come with, um, 
it's a little bit more pricier, um, but it does. The reason why is because it's a synthetic material that's actually going to resist heat, UV protection and salt water. And those are the three things that really kind of really hurt a, uh, um, a, a, a tender. So if you're going to be salt water from now on, I'd say go ahead and get uh, a hypalon. Um, if you're going to be one that's really not going to protect it and cover it, get a hypalon. But, you know, I have some people that are like, hey, you know, we're trying to do this on a budget. That 1600 bucks, 1700 buck difference, I could use towards maybe putting towards my dabit or fuel or whatever. And they're like, hey, we're going to do the loop. We're in fresh water now. We're going to do the loop. We'll only be in salt water for a year. And then we're going to be back in covered slip and we're going to always have a cover on it. It's going to last you. So, you know, it's kind of personal preference. Uh, we have some customers like I only want Hyperline and some are like, hey, I'd rather save the money. So just kind of your specific needs and what you're really wanting, uh, basically, when it comes down to it. So are both PVC and Hyperline tough enough to handle dogs jumping in and out? Yes, I do, because mine was always PVC. Um, and you saw the picture of my dog. He's a 90 pound uh, golden retriever, great Pyrenees, and it that totally holds up. No, no scratches or anything. Okay. I'd also um, add to that. Um, I think there, um, there's nothing wrong with buying Hypalon. It is much more expensive, um, but it does clean up better. It looks yep. better yeah. over years. Yep. Uh, uh, Hypalon is actually a neoprene fabric, which has a Hypalon coating over top of it. So it's the coating when they, when they call it Hypalon. Um, Durability wise, PVC is perfectly good. I think there is a fear out there about PVC and, and it comes from some of the cheap no name PVC. It's a fairly generic term for all kinds of different fabrics. But I mean, I think my, my tip is if you're gonna buy a PVC boat, you need to look for which brand of PVC someone's you're buying. And if you look in the catalog or on the website and it says Duramax PVC, clearly that's a marketing name that somebody made up it's not a, a, a reputable comp company uh, potentially. So Highfield uses Mailer Plus PVC. The plus actually refers to a, an extra coating that's for UV. Uh, it's a very good PVC. It's made in Germany, uh, imported. So it's it's a very good company. You can look it up online. Um, also, all the all of the seams are welded, which is really important. You don't want to buy a glued PVC boat. So there's just the difference. The, the difference is there's no such thing as really bad Hypalon. Any company that makes Hypalon, it's good fabric. Um, PVC is all over the place, but check the brand. Okay. Um, no, we do have somebody who asked, um, they've got the 310, um, and I think Dustin just answered it in yep. typing. 310 wondering if um, a console can be added. So Dustin, yes. that one's been handled through the typing, and yep. yes, it can be added? Yep, absolutely. You can do anything on 310 and above, long as it's a classic model, not the uh, ultralight, but a classic model, yes, you can do that. And uh, there are most dealers, uh, we'll have hopefully one in stock. Um, so yeah. Okay. A uh, couple of just common things. Um, uh, one person said very well thought out, very well done presentation. So thank you thank for you. that. Um, another on the engine discussion, just wanted to put out there that they purchased an e-propulsion electric motor so that they didn't have to mess with the gas. And that might be a thought. I don't know if you have any comments on that. So yes. To this type uh, of and, and we, you know, on our other presentation, we uh, talked about this and I've actually been very impressed with the e-propulsion. Actually, I'm in contact with the uh, e-propulsion now or actually Torquedo as far as being a dealer and uh, I'd like to explore them. But I think previously in the past, um, the capabilities were not there now that you know, we have better charging, better beta battery capability, especially going into cars and things like that. I think the technology is really coming around. And from what I've seen, I've been really impressed. And I think it's a great option uh, for people. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm glad to hear that. And it's uh, one of those things that I think uh, we should start exploring even more. OK, um, this question is a little specific to um, one particular uh, member's boat. Um, they have a CL290 built in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, every time they look for parts or accessories, they only list 2016 and later. Is there a difference between the 2015 and 2016 models? You know that, Tom? Mike, you got this one? No, they, um, no the, they're the same. The same model. 2015 and 2016 yeah. are the same. So you're good to go with those 2016. Yeah. Well, that's no Thank you. That's helpful. And our final question, can Dustin talk a little bit more about um, usual general boat sizes to go with what tender size? For example, 
is the classic 310 for a boat between 30 and 40 feet or is there, oh, is there some yeah. gauge that you can tell to help determine what might be best carried aboard your boat <laughs> so what do you want to do with it think about that what is your budget and what are your capabilities of your davit and your boat size i mean i, I have people come to me and they're like my boat is this big i want it tender that big i want the best of the best and mm. our davit can hold three thousand pounds all right let's put you in a sport model um or some are like hey i just need something to get me by something good good but i want some good quality i'm like hey classic with the you know with the fct console and then some are like hey I won't be using it. I want a boat in a bag. So it, that's a very hard question to answer directly. And I apologize. But uh, as far as, uh, you know, if you have a larger boat, like for me, for my Chris Craft Constellation, I had a Mariquip Davit that could do up to like a thousand pounds. You know, the classic 380 uh, or 360 uh, was perfect. Uh, but, you know, not necessarily. You know, I think the 340, 310 is a and they're cute as a button, by the way. I, that's why I love that 310 is you can get a Bimini for it. You, you, you can get a, a Tahatsu 20 on it and you can zip around and it's really cool. It's actually been one of my favorite boats is the 310. So but it's all restriction wise. So it's more about how you tend to use it and where yeah. you intend to use it than the size of it, the mother exactly. ship, so to speak. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Well, and it, it, just to j chime in on that, um, it, it, it's hard to say a 45 foot power boat versus a, what really comes down to is your aft beam. And, and some people will say, well, my boat has a 12 foot beam. Well, that that's your beam in the middle of the boat, whereas the widest, you need to know your aft beam at the back. And you need to, again, yeah, you need to know what your weight is. And then that will determine what the maximum um, you can put on there. And if you go on our website, we actually have a North American website. It's new, uh, highfieldnorthamerica.com. There, if you go into any of the boat pages and you click on downloads, you'll see a GA drawing mm -hmm. and for, say the, the FCT consoles. If you click on that, a PDF, it has the wet weights and it has the name, it names the different engines. And then you can sort of, if you want to put a different engine that maybe we haven't calculated, you can look at, look up the Yamaha and find out how much the Zuki difference is and just subtract the difference. And so you'll know exactly how much it weighs. All right. And all the all right. lengths and the measurements are on there. Yeah, that was our final question, and we are a few minutes over, so we're going to hold it okay. there. Um, Dustin Kidd with Bourbon City Yacht Tenders and Mike Carroll with Highfield. Thank you, uh, first of all, for your AGLCA support through your sponsorship and for your support of our members through your sponsorship. And thank you for sharing all those details today. Very helpful for those looking cool. for a tender, you, tender for the Great thank Loop. You. All right, take care. Bye, guys. Thank you.